Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Today we're going to take a look at how many three-way switches does the code require? And this is what we're looking at here. We're looking at a three-way switch loop. So let's imagine that we're in this hallway. There's a switch located here and there's a switch located there. So a three-way switch controls lighting outlet or outlets at only two locations. So for it to be a three-way switch, it must have only two locations where you're doing the switching. One switch is a single location, two is a three-way, and three up to a million switches is considered a four-way switching configuration. So let's go ahead and ask this question. How many three-way switches does the code require? What do you think? Let's get to it. So let's take a look at this scenario again. First, let's start on the left-hand side. Do you think that the code requires each one of those switches to be there? So we have a switch here and a switch there. Does the code require it? And if the code does require it, what stops them from saying I need a switch here and a switch there? When does it stop? Let's go ahead and take a look at this situation on the right here. Would their code require you to have a switch on the way into this kitchen and on the way out of this kitchen? Should it require it? You can let us know what you think down in the comments below. But before we answer this question, we have to consider 90.1a. And 90.1a is in the beginning of the NEC, it's in the introduction. And what it says here is that the code is not intended as a design specification or an instruction manual for the untrained person. So the argument here is that if the code does require there to be two switches in this hallway, what stops the code from saying there needs to be one here and one here? And in this room here, what stops them from saying there needs to be one here, one here, one over by the front door, one over by the back door. So the code is not intended to be a design manual and where they hold their position on this situation is that this is a design issue. There is one place in the code though where it does specifically require there to be three-way switching and it might surprise you. Let's check it out. Of all the places that the NEC could require three-way switching configurations, which one do you think it is? You think it's in hallways, large rooms, entryways? Well, unfortunately, it's not any of these. The only code required place in the NEC that you have to have a three-way switching configuration is going to be in stairwells. And it's not in all stairwells, but we're gonna talk about the scenario when it is required. So according to the NEC, you could literally have a 100-foot-long hallway and only have one switch in that hallway. So that's just a crazy thing to think about. Even a large room, it's not required. The only required place is in stairwells, and let's look at what the code says. So let's imagine that we're in this stairwell here, and let's read the code. We're in 210.72.3. It says, where one or more lighting outlet or outlets are installed for interior stairwells, there shall be a listed wall-mounted control device at each floor level and landing that includes an entryway to control those lights when the stairs have six risers or more. So let's look at this set of stairs. One riser, two riser, three riser, four riser, five riser, six riser. So this stairway would qualify. So with this stairwell that we're looking at here, at a minimum, you would have a switch here and you would have a switch up here. But now let's talk about the other part of this code where it said if there is a landing, which is this part right here, and it does have a doorway. So let's imagine your eighth grade teacher's door is right here at the top of this landing way. According to this code, there would be required to be a switch at this location as well. Now, there are some exceptions down below this code. Remember, NEC stands for National Exception Code. And some of these exceptions include, you know, allowing there to be remote controlled lighting for these locations and other things like that. Always work with your electrical inspector to make sure that yours is code compliant. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I just want to see you win. If there's anything I can ever do to help you in life or in business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.